you're doing today, Orly, is you're taking our blah sweatshirts mm -hmm. and making them ta-da. <laughs> Yes, that is exactly right, Debbie. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I was, Lucas has been lovely so yeah. far. That was absolutely delicious, and I can't wait to hear him sing. And the idea for customizing the straps was sort of twofold. One was I love the fact that you could r literally write something on it, customizing it in absolutely any way that you want, but also just taking a store-bought, boring old sweatshirt, or yeah. one that you've had forever, taking out the existing straps and putting something custom, like these two here that are hanging, it instantly makes them custom and one of a kind and special and right. no one else has it and they're no which longer is boring because cool. otherwise just a white and black yeah. and blue boring sweatshirt it's fine but it's but fine who likes fine? who likes fine we want to die we want to die so can we use any sort of trim okay this is what i'll say most hoodies have these rings right here so you see where the um straps actually go in there's two grommets okay. even if they don't have grommets they are going to have a buttonhole that's been sewed which restricts the width of the um, trim that you can actually fit inside because you okay. have to get it in through there. All right. If you have a trim that's wider, just make sure that it's something like this, like a ribbon that's so soft that it can easily kind of bend and roll inside. I got if it's it. something really rigid or thick and it's too wide, you're not going to be able to loop it through the uh, strap. Okay, so this, that's the main thing to keep in mind. And it's relatively easy to do this. It's very easy. Okay, what do we do first? So the first one, for the one that I'm wearing, for example, it was a regular hoodie where the casing for my hood was open all the way around. All right. So what I did is I just took the old hoodie strap and pulled it right through okay. and took a safety pin on the edge of my strap and fed it through it. We've done that a million times. Right. You just kind of feed it through all the way and pull it and it's in. Right, the trick that you use when it comes out. In a drawstring comes out, exactly. And you're like, oh no, that's what you do. Okay. The safety pin. All right. Right, so that's the first. Okay, now what about if it does, what if it's closed in the back and it's one of those that doesn't come out? So Debbie, this is one of those things where I didn't really remember that was a thing yeah. until I was doing the DIY and then I'm like, ah! Right. So these sweatshirts here, they're sewn yeah. right here on the top. They actually sewed it closed, so there's no way for me to pull the strap mm -hmm. out because it's actually connected at the top. Which is a good thing if you're not trying to replace it. Right, they right. don't fall out. But yeah. in this case, it was a problem. So what I did is I gathered it up all the way. So you're gonna tug on your sweatshirt in order to, to kind of pull out as much excess as you possibly can. Okay. Then cut off the excess. You can see here about as much as I cut off. That's how long it originally was. Right. I cut it and I took my ribbon and wrapped it around. So what you would do is when you have your ribbon or your trim, go onto the edge, take your, um, like about an inch of your trim, you're gonna fold this over and fold this over and just do a simple stitch or even fabric tack it. Okay. And that's gonna basically connect this and it's like, Smart. it's gonna feed it through. Okay. So now you see I'm here, I'm fully connected. This and isn't going it. anywhere. And now when I straighten it, I'm nice. gonna be able to feed it in there. Nice. And you just pull. Look at that. And look, now. And it doesn't look frayed. You can't it tell. Look anything. No, yeah, that's you can't beautiful. tell. So from here to here, it's my original hoodie strap. And that's from here great. down, it's our, our that's, statement That almost one. seems easier than doing it the other way. I love this. Yeah, it's great. All right, now how do we put our, um, our lettering on it? How are we going to do that? Okay, so the first thing is you want to write it out with like a chalk. Okay. Not just with a pencil. But right. chalk that really comes clean. Because the what, first thing I did on this is I actually wrote it with a just like a coloring pencil, a dark right. pencil. Because I'm like, well, I'm covering it with paint, so who cares what color it is? Okay. But as I was painting it, sometimes you'll notice that you need to like make a slight adjustment here and there. Okay. You will barely be able to see this, but on the E, I had to lower my E just slightly, and I can see the line. It was originally right here. Yeah, you it's can very see it faint. You can bit. barely see it, but you want to make sure you do it with something that you can wipe clean. All right. So when you you start writing the another tip is always start with your last letter all right so if I started let's say I wrote the word someone and I started here and I did my s oh and then I run out of room bad news yeah so start here you're gonna do I'm going upside down so I might do this weird but you're writing going up so let's say I'm doing love I'm going this nice. way right okay and so that I naturally know that I'm spacing it out perfectly all right. now we go in with our paint and I'm using this like puffy paint which is different than the you the little bottles I'm yeah. just seeing you Yeah, use. and I feel so, so I usually use a different product and the bottles are really tiny. These have the exact same effect and they actually dry a lot faster. I I, I feel so silly because I've done so many projects. And you just discovered this. And I just, yeah, we just started, well, started using it. But the technique is the same. You want to always, when you're doing it, kind of off to the side, test out so you know how much you need to squeeze for the right thickness. Okay. And then you're just going to go right over. And are all the tips on these bottles this thin? 
It really uh, gives you yeah, control, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. It really, really does. And if you, the, the one thing I'll tell you is if let's say you make a mistake, like it came out too thick, without using any paint, don't squeeze, use the tip of the paint to like straighten it out. And you can get in there and kind of fine tune it. Just don't squeeze your bottle. And you can okay. always fix it. All right. So go through, and this is what you would do. You just keep writing the word, steady hand. And how long does this take to dry? Uh, this morning, I'd say it took about an hour and a half. Okay. Which is, is very quick compared to some other paints. It was very fast. And now, then if we you, have to finish the ends. Yes. So there's a couple ways to finish the ends. The first one is with ribbon like this, is you would just cut it clean. Let's say I'm gonna cut on an angle because it always looks really pretty. And then I would use my fray check. Okay. That will crisp up the ends so they're not gonna fray. Right. The next option is, as you can see on the two hanging, I tied a knot. I the like same that way look. that most hoodies have that knot, I just tied a knot and I'm gonna let the ends fray as they fray because it doesn't matter. The knot is gonna hold it in place. All right. So that one was elastic and this one is kind of like a so crocheted cool. trim. And so you can do that. The last option would be hemming it. Okay. If you are gonna hem it though, can I just recommend, in order for it to look really nice and clean, don't just fold it over and stitch. You fold it over once and then fold it over again Okay. and stitch. That way you end up right there. Nice. It's nice and clean, but just know that you're gonna see the stitch line. All right. You know, like know you're gonna right. see that so thread. So then make it part of the fashion. Then, exactly. Do that, right? Exactly. Like and the last thing I'd say is if you don't have a very steady hand or you worry that you're not gonna be able to paint it like right. that, iron on letters, like embroidery letters, right. or even like little, little vinyl transfer letters, the iron on is a super easy way to customize it without needing to have a steady and hand. And what about this over here, that trim that's sort of fancy? Yeah, so these more um, like crystally ones, you could do like a really cool, totally crystal rhinestone or stone or stone, stone, what is the English the word? word? Stone, yeah, it's, and words are hard. How do you say stone? Words are hard, oh, Orly. <laughs> my goodness. Okay, so if you do something like this, I would just recommend that you do this technique, and that's not only because it's easier to feed through, but because you don't want to waste an expensive trim all exactly. in the hoodie where you're never going to see it. Just attach it only a few inches. If I use a puffy paint, can I wash it? Yes. And oh, it's totally, totally machine washable. Yeah, absolutely. I love this, Orly. You've done it so again. Fun. If you love someone, well, I love you. I love you. I love you, Orly. <laughs> and I know you all love Orly as well. And you'll love making her sweatshirts. All They're you have so to do fun. is visit HallmarkChannel.com for full instructions.